This particular application has to do with transportation. It says an auto manufacturer sends cars from two plants, one and two, to dealerships A and B located in a Midwestern city. Plant one has a total of 28 cars to send and plant two has eight. Dealer A needs 20 cars and dealer B needs 16. The transportation cost per car based on the distance of each dealership from each plant are 220 from 1 to A, 300 from 1 to B, 400 from 2 to A, and 180 from 2 to B. The manufacturer wants to limit those transportation costs to 10,640. So what we want to know is how many cars should be sent from each plant to each of the dealerships. This is a fairly complicated problem. I mean, the paragraph takes almost a full screen just to write down here. So we need to start organizing our information in such a way that we can start writing out equations. So the first thing that I notice is what the question is. The question says, how many cars should be sent from each plant to each of the two dealerships? So I know what my unknowns are, and there's four of them. If I just do X, Y, and Z, I won't have enough variables. So what I'm going to use in this case is X sub 1, X sub 2, X sub 3, and X sub 4. So these are just four variables, and the subscript, the 1, 2, and the 3, tell me which one is which. So X1 is going to be the number of cars from plant 1 to dealership A. X2 will be the number of cars from plant 1 to dealership B. X3, the number of cars from plant 2 to dealership A. And X4 is the number of cars from plant 2 to dealership B. So I'll arrange that on top so I can keep track of them. And now I'm going to start picking out some information and seeing how it corresponds to an equation. So first off, we had that plant 1 has a total of 28 cars to send. Well, plant 1 corresponds to X1 and X2. So if it has 28 cars to send, that means that X1 plus X2, that's what's being shipped from plant 1, must be equal to 28. Plant 2 had a total of 8 cars to send, and X3 and X4 have to do with plant 2, so I know that means that X3 plus X4 is equal to 8. Notice if I know what those variables are, I can look up here and pretty much just read off what the equation should be. Where people run into trouble is if they don't write this stuff down, there's just too much to keep track of and actually write these equations down. I won't consider a problem correct unless I see a description of the variables like I have up here on top. So now here's another piece of information. Dealer A needs 20 cars. Well, how does dealer A get cars? Well, he gets it through X1 and through X3. So the total, X1 plus X3, then, has to equal 20. Dealer B needs 16 cars, and X2 and X4 tell me about dealership B. So X2 plus X4 equals 16. Now the one that usually causes a bit of trouble. We need to limit our transportation costs to 10,640. So I know something is going to total up to 10,640, so I've written equals 10,640. Now, we were told that it costs 220 to ship a car from plant 1 to dealership A. So if that's one car, 220 times X1 is going to tell me the cost to ship cars from plant 1 to dealership A. If I look at the next term, it was 300 to ship a car from 1 to B. So 300 times X2 tells me the cost for shipping from plant 1 to dealership B. The costs are 400 to ship a car from 2 to A. So 400 times X3 are the costs to ship from plant 2 to dealership A. And finally, it was 180 to ship a car from 2 to B. So 180X4 tells me the cost to ship from plant 2 to dealership B. If I add those all up, that's my total transportation cost, and we were limited to 10,640. So let's take all of those equations and write them down. So we have five different equations here, and we have four variables. Some of the equations do not have 
uh, the other variables in it. So when we write down our augmented matrix, we'll put zeros in place of those columns. So the first column here has to do with x1, second x2, x3, then x4. So when we have x1 plus x2 equals 28, that means we'll have 1, 1, because that's the x1 and the x2 column, zeros in place of the x3 and x4, and then a 28 on the other side of the equals bar. And we do the same thing for each of the other equations that we have here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows to this, because we had 5 equations, and I also have 5 columns, because we had 4 variables and also the constants. So now we need to start working through our Gauss-Jordan method to actually come up with the solution for this. So the first thing I need to do is to make sure that I have a 1 in the first row, first column, and I do. So I don't need to do anything there. But I do now need to put zeros below that, and then I'm going to have to put zeros in two different places, where I see a 1 in the third row, and also where I see the 220 in the fifth row. So to take care of that third row, I'm going to take minus 1 times row 1 and add it to row 3 and put the result in row 3. So here you see minus 1 times row 1, add that to row 3, and the resulting row gives me 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 8. And now that needs to be put in place of row 3. Now I need to go down and put that 0 where I see the 220. So I'm going to take negative 220 times row 1, add that to row 5, and put the result in row 5. So here's negative 220 times row 1, add it to row 5. And when I do the arithmetic here, I get 0, 80, 400, 180, and 4,480. And now that needs to go in place of row 5. So I've got my ones and my zeros. Now I need to go down to that second row, second column, and put a one there. And the easiest way to do that is to notice that there's the number that I need there. And if I just switch row two and row four, that doesn't change what I did previously in the second row. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to interchange row two and row four to put the row, uh, the one, in the second row, second column. Now that I have that one, we need to put zeros below it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add row 2 and row 3. So will those two add together to give me 0, and I'll put the result in row 3. So here's row 2, here's row 3, and when I add them together, I get 0, 0, 1, 1, 8, and now that needs to go into row 3. Next step, now I need to take care of that 80. So I'm going to take negative 80 times row 2, add that to row 5, and put the result in row 5. So here's negative 80 times row 2, add that to row 5, and when I add my columns up, what I see is I get 0, 0, 400, 100, and 3200. And now that needs to go in place of row 5. So I've got 1's in the top of the first column, zeros below. Then I move down and I get a 1 in the second row, second column, zeros below. And now I move down to this and check to see if that's a 1. And indeed it is. So the next thing I need to do now is I need to put zeros below that. So I'm going to take negative 1 times row 3 and add it to row 4, put the result in row 4. So there's negative 1 times row 3, row 4. When I add it, I get a row of zeros, which I'll put into row 4. Now I'm going to take negative 400 times row 3 and add it to row 5 and put the result in row 5. So there's negative 400 times row 3 row 5. When I add the columns up, I get 0, 0, 0, negative 300, and 0.
and we need to put that up here in our augmented matrix. I'm going to go ahead and interchange row 4 and row 5 because what I want to be able to do is to drop down from the previous one and put a 1 in place of the negative 300. So I've already made that change here. So in the next step, I'm going to take negative 1 over 300 times row 4 and put it into row 4, which gives me 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and I've already placed that in here. So now I've got 1's down the diagonal and 0's below it. Now I need to put those zeros up here in this triangular piece. So I'm going to do that fairly quickly here. So negative 1 times row 4 plus row 3. Put the result into row 3. You see the work down here below. So row 3 needs to be 0, 0, 1, 0, 8. And I've already made that change. Now I need to take negative 1 times row 4 plus row 2. So there's a negative 1 times the old row 4. Add it to row 2. And I'm going to put that into row 2. And here I've already done it for you. The last thing I need to do is to put a 0 in the first row, second column. So to do that, I'll take negative 1 times row 2 plus row 1. Put that into row 1. So here you see the work down below and I end up with 1, 0, 0, 0, 12. And I've put that in place. So now that we're here, you might be thinking that this is a dependent system because we have an entire row of zeros. What that basically means is we could just leave that off here. But what's left up here above is almost in perfect reduced row echelon form and we can read off the values of each one of the variables. When we get a dependent system is when we can't read off one of them. So if this had been all zeros here in the fourth row, then we would have had a dependent system because we wouldn't have had a value for the last variable. So if I go ahead and read things off here, x1 is 12, x2 is 16, x3 is 8, and x4 is 0. So let's go back and look at our variables again and figure out what that means. X1 being 12 means that 12 cars from plant 1 to dealership A. X2 being 16 means 16 cars from plant 1 to dealership B. X3 being 8 means 8 cars from plant 2 to dealership A. And X4 being 0 is, means we're not going to use that particular transportation link. We're going to do 0 cars from plant 2 to dealership B.